بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن ان دا پاس فیو سیشنز وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کنورجنس آف کارپریٹ گورننس اینڈ اگین لوکنگ ایٹ دا ڈفرینٹ فیکٹرز ان دا لاسٹ سیشن وی ٹاک اباؤٹ اے ویری امپارٹنٹ فیکٹر وچ از کلچر اینڈ ہاؤ وی بیسکلی سی این آئس برگ افیکٹ دیٹ واٹ از وزیبل از اونلی ون ٹینتھ وائل دا ریسٹ آف اٹ از انڈ دا واٹر جسٹ لائک این آئس برگ ٹوڈے وی گوئن ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ انادر ویری امپارٹنٹ فیکٹر اینڈ دوز آر انسٹیٹیوشنل کمپلیمنٹیریٹیز ناؤ وین وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ انسٹیٹیوشنل کمپلیمنٹیریٹیز دین ٹرانسپلانٹنگ سم آف دا فارمل ایلیمنٹس ود آؤٹ ریگارڈ فار دی انسٹیٹیوشنل کمپلیمنٹس مے لیڈ ٹو سیریس پرابلمس آپٹمل کارپریٹ گورننس میکنزمز آر کنٹیکچرل اینڈ مے ویری بائی انڈسٹریز اینڈ ایکٹیویٹیز سو جسٹ لائک آئی واز مینشننگ رائٹ ناؤ دیٹ دیر از اے گریٹ سنکرونائزیشن اینڈ اے گریٹ برج بٹوین کلچر اینڈ انسٹیٹیوشنل کمپلیمنٹیریٹیز ناؤ وین وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کلچر اور انسٹیٹیوشنل کمپلیمنٹیریٹیز دین we must understand the iceberg effect in which uh, they are uh, the formal structure, they are the laws, they are the policies, they are the strategies, there is the organogram, there is the structure, there are the job descriptions, uh, they are the performance matrices, uh, there are different uh, rules and regulations and there are different frameworks and different monitoring mechanisms, uh, there are different plans, there are different annual development uh, plans and there are uh, different contextualizations. Now, that basically only constitutes the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the organization is below that. Uh, many of the uh, macro factors are visible and they are very evident. However, the micro factors are below the water or are invisible to the common eye and many a times are not given their due consideration, which can then lead to different complications and also can lead uh, to uh, the the... Uh, the elimination of an organization such as what we see Xerox, uh, we see Kodak, uh, we see uh, just recently uh, Nokia. Uh, we, we look at different uh, organizations which are mammoth organizations like uh, we've been talking about earlier. Uh, we've been uh, talking about how uh, different organizations basically uh, were uh, evaporated uh, from the corporate scene uh, because of bad uh, global practices or bad corporate practices. And, uh, and again, Enron, we see 3M. Uh, communication. We see uh, various uh, global organizations being knocked out of the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange or through the NASDAQ and um, their existence is no more over here. So all of these things are happening because of institutional complementarities and not understanding them, which then leads to serious uh, problems and also different complications and sometimes uh, the eradication of the whole organization. Uh, uh, again, optimal uh, corporate governance mechanisms are contextual and therefore Uh, understanding them uh, from industry to industry and sector to sector and country to country, uh, there are differences. And again, understanding all of those are very important. And, and then uh, molding the corporate governance framework to those uh, unique uh, perspectives also uh, becomes very important. And to ensure again that we are upholding the values of equity, uh, participation and trust uh, and again, uh, a merit-based decision making are very, very uh, important. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Germany and Japan, the corporation's long-term relations with banks, customers and suppliers facilitates long-term commitments to employees. We talk about lifelong employment in Japan, even in this modern 21st century. Uh, in Japan and also in Germany, to a certain extent, there are lifelong relationships and person joins at the age of 20 and retires at the age of 60 or 65. And that again is a very fascinating relationship because uh, they basically believe uh, in long-term commitments. The commitment uh, to permanency promotes extensive firm specific training and therefore that also enables the firm to invest in the individual, extensively invest in the individual and upgrade their skills, upgrade their careers and see that there is a trajectory in which the individual and the organization grow together. There is also uh, the option of having uh, shareholding and stock options and all of these things to basically motivate and promote and make the uh, empl every employee of the organization an owner of the organization in a broader context so that all of them strive for the betterment of the organization. And that is what we see uh, in the European and also the Japanese model. In the US, however, employees are more mobile and there is less firm specific skill development and the US fluid managerial labor markets make it easier for ousted managers to find new jobs after hostile takeover. So this concept of hostile takeovers, this concept of mergers, this concept of uh, firing complete teams, of hiring completely new teams uh, or can uh, create its own implications and its own complications, but because there is a different culture and there is a different mindset, uh, therefore uh, employees 
can switch jobs uh, relatively easily and in case that there has been a hostile takeover or there has been a merger, uh, then the employees can get golden handshakes and also move forward in their own careers and it is uh, more, uh, you can say, uh, more facilitatory uh, in the US. It is difficult to disentangle the exogenous initial conditions that established a path from the ex post adaptations. Despite numerous calls for the Japanese to do more in the way of venture capital, the fact is that Japan lacks the fluid labor market. So again, uh, what we see is that if we are looking at the Japanese market, then it becomes very difficult to disentangle their culture from the American culture or the global culture. Venture capitalism is very less over there because uh, there is very less movement of employees and there's more permanency of employees, more permanency of policy, more permanency of strategy and more permanency of implementation. And therefore, they do not require those capital swings uh, to propel uh, the progress forward. And we have seen that in the case of Toyota and also in the case of uh, Mitsubishi uh, Bank uh, and also uh, what we see uh, in uh, Nissan. And all of these different examples uh, are benchmarks and hallmarks of the Japanese model uh, when we're talking about all of these things. The Japanese nevertheless uh, do have high rates of innovation, but they achieve it via corporate spin-offs and big company funding. In Germany and in Japan, there is less vertical integration of industrial companies. So we are not looking at the vertical integration, but actually we're looking at a more horizontal approach uh, over there, which tends to facilitate and promote and motivate the different stakeholders of the organization and in turn uh, tend to benefit all of the shareholders of the organization. And that is the beauty of institutional complementarities in the context of convergence uh, of corporate governance. Thank you so much.